Hello, hello. What's going on, guys? How's it going this evening? Didn't have anything planned or anything. Just happened upon the NBA Hoops Premium Stock Mega Box hello, out there in the world and figured on, we'd just open it for fun, give it a try. Try to hit that gold Zion autograph, zero of one, worth seven million dollars. What the hell are you guys up to tonight? Just open it for fun, give it a try. Try to hit that gold Zion autograph, zero of one. Man, it's rough out there, dude. It's cold, and then it's hot, and then it ain't, and then it's not. Yeah, I know. It's this. There's only one of them, man. Zero of one. It's so hot that I don't even have it yet. So I figured we'd give a few people a minute or two to get in here, and then we'll see what we can accomplish. Let me see if I'm doing this right. Okay. All right. Yep, this one, that one. Are you guys checking out the NBA tonight? I know there's a lot of games going on this evening, and I was super excited. I got a couple of guys coming out in a video in just a day or so here that people have been talking about that I've been on for a bit, but I've got a, a few cards I believe that they don't have that uh, people have kind of overlooked. So I've got a, a few guys in the works, so to speak, which should be out pretty soon. What are you guys up to? You invest $100 for your fantasy basketball league? What up, Poseidon? How you doing? What's up, everybody? Brian? Sports card collector, mosaic mine, trading cards, and more. Can't forget this. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome, friends. Yes. So if you guys have any questions or you guys are wondering about any specific players or anything, holy shit, are the Knicks really up 70 to 35 on the on the Cavs? Kyrie is a weirdo. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Kyrie, man. You know, it is just it, it is what it is. I mean, I know he's a talented dude, and, and, you know, maybe we'll see some action with him in the future. Who knows? But, I, you know, he's just not my cup of tea. I like Charles Barkley smacking him around and letting him know, hey, man. So that's that's really what I'm all about. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, okay, what else is going on? We got the uh, the Raptors and the Heat tied up. The Nets and the Celtics. We got the Pelicans already kicking the living hell out of the Bucks, but it doesn't look like Giannis is playing. Then we got the Bulls and the Thunder. It'll be interesting to see Kobe White. Did you already mention what this box cost? Oh, this box is supposed to be $40. It's a $40 box of cards, and you can't get it for less than essentially $140 on the secondary retail market, which is it's really messed up. So, yeah, you're, it's pretty expensive. And, you know, I got a hookup that ended up having one an extra one, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I had to pay through the nose to get it too. But this was, you know, I don't really open a lot of wax these days. I either keep it or I just don't mess with it or I buy it and flip it. And this is just one that I'm going to open just for myself because I really like the Hoops premium stock product. And I was excited to see eight exclusive green cracked ice, pr you know, prisms on average. So that sounds pretty good. You miss Smash Mouth, Rim Rock, and Basketball? <laughs> Jeez, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, you land that in an actual store? Nah, I got it from a friend. But it is a cool product. Yeah, everybody in the league is soft now, man. What is this nonsense? So it'll be cool to see what Kobe White can do. And I got to tell you guys, I want to see some more Bull Bull as well. Because Bull Bull the other night was... He, he only played for five minutes, right? What up, Northern Sports Cards? What the hell is he doing playing for only five minutes, guys? But he put up ten points and six rebounds and an assist in five funky-ass minutes. To me, that's a great line. <laughs> and he already, I mean, like, Michael Porter Jr. played for 25 minutes in that game, guys. And he put up a worse line than Bull Bull in five. Now, I know Michael Porter Jr. is a good player and he's got potential. But come on, man. Stop sneezing and snoozing on the Bull Bull. Get him out there. Get him the Bull. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're gonna open it in a second here. Let's see, what, let's see what we can do. We're gonna slow roll it as we chill and talk. So there's some Freddy Krueger shit right there. A little bit of blade down the middle. He deserves respect just for his awesome name. And did you see what he showed up to the draft in? I mean, the dude literally wore a black suit covered in spider webs. Lamelo for rookie of the year. Bull Bull is gonna be rookie of the year, man. I have a ton of Bull Bull though. To to be fair. Yeah, exactly. Number three. You got it, Corbin. You, you know, I might even put Bull Bull up there at number two. We'll call him LaBull James. But if he gets really bad, people are going to start calling him Toilet. And that's not cool. So let's see what we got here. Oh, it looks nice. You get 64 cards, 8 packs of 8, 
and it says on the back that base silver prism, green prism, silver scope, teal, teal wave, red cracked ice. I mean, what in the hell? You might as well just have actual gold on the cards these days, man. Hot signatures, rookie ink, hoops ink, rookie special, high voltage, lights, camera, actions. On average, non-base cards are included approximately two in every pack. So we're going to get 16 shots at a dope-ass card. Hopefully we get a good player out of the 300 people that are in the set. <laughs> I'll send you records. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Thank you. Which records? I'm about to sell some of my vinyl. I'm about to cut down a little bit on it on my personal vinyl collection. I don't need five copies of the wall. You know what I mean? Thon Maker used to be Bowl Bowl. What about that Taco Fall guy? He's a, he's a tall character, huh? Eh? What is this? Look at it. What what the? What is this got arms or something? What is this shit? Look. This is some weird. Look at the construction on this. Whoa! It's all classic rock. Well, hell yeah, that's what I like. All right, guys. Little, let's see if we got a little taste here. There's how many packs is this? Bitch, I, you thought you was one short. This this pack didn't want to come out of the box, so we're gonna save this pack for last. You, my friend, you're gonna sit over here to the side. All right, guys. So this is what gets you a hundred and forty dollars on the secondary retail market. We're gonna call it retail two for short. Yeah, it's unnecessary. <laughs> what in the hell is that? I have the Westbrook Fleer rookie from your last video. It's at PSA right now. Yeah, sweet and spicy. I saw that message. I actually have three of them over here that I got from Compsy the other day, and they're in excellent condition. They look like they're at least nines. Eight if I'm unlucky, ten if I'm lucky. Let's see what we got in the in the grade box over here. I got I got a few of them right here, man. This is the grade box. There you go. I got three PSA 9s on the way in the mail. I've got another couple raw. I bought about eight or nine of these total. I really do think that these are extremely nice cards. They definitely are underpriced uh, for the what I perceive to be the demand of Westbrook cards in the future. Luckily for me, these are all minty fresh. I mean, these were literally sitting on Compsy in mint condition for 11 to $12. I mean, there's no way that that wasn't underpriced. That's one of my favorite things to do as a collector, investor, flipper, whatever you want to call it, is find cards that are definitely underpriced in the market, and the market just isn't aware. They're just not paying that much attention to that particular card at the moment. And then when they do, those prices are going to jump because demand is definitely going to skyrocket out of the supply in a lot of those cases so what do we got any uh, any tips or a video on a first submission i actually have a couple of videos in the back that um well not in the back but you know what i mean in my video list there are a couple of videos that help you prepare your cards for psa and it'll show you everything that i do to get those ready yo what's up merlin how you doing man all right guys we're gonna go slowly here again it's not gonna be a super long stream or anything i just wanted to kind of share this with you guys since i'm opening it anyway and i figure why the hell not come and share it with you fine individuals that's funny i was looking at ed yeah exactly those are good those are those are really nice cards but there's not that many good players from those you know it's like you can get russell westbrook and i think there's like kyle lowry and a, a few others from those times but there's really kevin durant yes that one is pretty expensive. I had that in a PSA 8 that I submitted myself in like 2016 or something, but it was only worth like 20 bucks at the time. All right, guys, what do we got? We got Courtney Lee. You guys remember when this guy was on the Knicks? I played this guy in DFS all the time. So we got Courtney Lee. Are you going to focus any bit? We got a little bit of focus? All right. Whoa, you went out of focus, man. You was focused. Bitch, I need you to focus. All right, we got Courtney Lee. Trey Young, that's not a bad one, right? He looks pissed. Look at him. He looks like a tank. You see this dude with a gun across the battlefield? All right, we'll set that one aside. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> we got Terrence Ferguson. Yo, I don't have this on auto focus either. Let me just turn auto zone off of this for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know what its strategy is. Bear with me, my friends. Okay, configure video. Camera control, autofocus, get off of my balls. And now where does the focus lie? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? You gonna do me like that? Now you're not gonna focus on anybody at all? Huh? 
Well, there's Courtney Lee. A little bit of dust over there. How's everyone doing? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I remember David Lee on the Knicks. Oh, God. That was, that's a rough one, man. David Lee on the Knicks. All right. Well, there's Terrence Ferguson into Zach Collins. Man, that's just not good enough for me, dude. Hold on a second, guys. I got to fix this. I should have done this. Well, we haven't had any problems with it the last few times, so I, I just... I thought that it was into uh, the situation uh, nicely. You know, I thought everything was going to work out. So let's say if I'm holding the card right here. Okay, there we go. That's got to be the jam. Is that the jam? It looks to me like the jam. <clears throat> yeah, that was just yesterday, though, homeboy. Let's see how often that happens. There's Zach Collins into Robert Covington. No, nothing going on here. There, oh, oh, it's one of those stupid tribute cards. Is that Duran or something? What do we got? Oh, it's a rookie, Isaiah Roby. No. <laughs> it's the jam. What up, Willis? All right, guys, who's the tribute going to be? I don't really like these tributes, but if it's a Laker, it's a Laker. Shaquille O'Neal with the cracked ice tribute. It was like Shaq. <laughs> I, I thought it was a tribute, and it is a tribute. I was right. I guess it could be worse, right? What oh, is a silver it's a silver Landry Shamit. He's not even on the Clippers anymore, man. All right, well, we got a Trey Young, and we got a, a Shaq cracked-ass green ice. That's not bad. That's not a bad-looking card. That's cool, though. Yeah, this is like Hoops Chrome. Yeah, this, this I got to tell you guys, the worst part about this is the font on these tribute cards. I really don't like them. I know that they're throwback. But, I mean, look at how awesome this card looks. Imagine if this was just nothing up here. Never mind my lizard age skin. Imagine if that just didn't exist. It would be sweet. But, yeah, I like, the, I like these cards. And I think these cards have a lot of potential. I honestly like them way better than Mosaic. And the reason why is that Hoops is a premium name. It's a premium brand. So, you've got Prism. And you have Select. But I think that this Hoops might even overtake Select as the second best of all of the products you know when you're looking at them combinatorially and you're thinking about which one is the most popular versus least uh hoops and then you know you got optic and and you know we have prism and you have select and optic and all that type of shit besides all the immaculate collection and national treasures all the expensive stuff so i don't know i really like the hoops things these these are nice cards so that's cool nice little shack leave them over here for you guys to enjoy the shack ball and the Isaiah Roby is probably whatever. Nothing too juicy in that pack. But we started off with a Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, Hoops has a history. You know, it's not bad. I wish that was just a regular, but what are you going to do? There's a Zion on the back, guys. Zion Williamson. But it looks like it's a, it's a damn insert. It's not the actual rare. It's like, get out of here or something. And that's exactly what I'll tell you to do. Get out of here. I want the base, not the, not the buns. I want the base. <laughs> There's a Terry Rozier. He's kicking some ass. Into Eric Gordon. Used to be a player. Used to be an ace. Josh Hart. Yeah, if it's silver. I don't think so, though. But it, maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. We're going to see. Waha! Deontay Murray! Boy, I'll tell you what, the Spurs are like the oldest team in basketball. You guys ever realize that? The Spurs are like, you got old-ass LaMarcus Aldridge, you got old-ass DeMar DeRozan, old-ass Rudy Gay, and, and they're just they're just not that good. Uh, the reason why they're valued less is because Prism is the flagship product. Prism is the product that everyone has the demand for. It's the one that everyone wants, so it's going to have the most premium. Is that a... Is it John Morant? No, it's John Stockton. And what is that down there? It says first edition? No, it says first national. It's actually first interstate? I knew I knew that this was going to happen eventually and that corporate sponsorship was sponsorship was going to bleed through from the sports stadiums into the cards themselves. I have a silver uh, Montrez Harrell optic and it's and it looks really cool, but right in this area where this bank ad is, it literally has a McDonald's art. Like what? Okay, who is the green cracked ice? It's another Laker, guys. It's another Laker. Is it is it Kobe or something, or is it a double shack? It better not be somebody dumb. I won't accept that. 
It better not be Kyle Kuzma. It, it probably scratches pretty easily. Is that who? What does it say? Why? Ooh, Malik Beasley. Oh, Avery Bradley. Uh, I was going to say. Better get you a Larsa pippin' ass out of here. So, do you think investing in NBA hoops is kind of pointless? No, I don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't be opening the packs, Danny. Thank you, though. Thank you. Only should be bought for the hobby and fun, correct? No, I, I don't agree. Anytime it's fun, then people probably like it. And if that's the case, then they're probably interested. In, is it a silver? No, it's not. Then they're probably interested in having the product at some point in time. And it could be decent for long term. So there's our cracked ice. And there is the Zion Williamson slightly off center. Get out the way. Insert. Whoa, bitch. Get out the way. <laughs> Kuzma is a beast. I don't like him. I think he's a dummy, and I think his hair is stupid. I think Kyle Kuzma is the epitome of thinking that he's a beast. Call me crazy, but I'm just not into that guy. He's just not into you. However, a Zion Williamson rookie get out the way, I'll take. Nah, you're good. You're good. I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm just teasing, Danny, because... um. It, it's funny to me because I've been streaming for a long time and I used to have people come into my Twitch stream and they would say, don't you think? Because, okay, so again, stupid backstory. Diablo 3 was the game and people would always come in and be like, is your build this way or that way? You know, because you have to like build your character. And no, I actually have a, a bunch of Lonzo cards, to be honest, and uh, including PSA 10 stuff. So whenever you hear somebody say, don't you think that this is a certain way or whatever, it's like, no, because if I did think that, then I would be doing something differently. So it's just it's just funny. I'm not making fun of you. It just stuck me. You know, it's fine. Did your wife still holding her Bitcoin? I remember she owned Bitcoin. Yeah, we got all kinds of Bitcoin, man. I actually had a friend the other or just the other day who does Pokemon openings on uh, on Twitch TV, and he was like, "I'm, I'm babbling, by the way. I'm sorry, Danny." Uh, <laughs> and he he told me that he kept his Bitcoin. When it was only like seven or eight hundred dollars, he kept his Bitcoin, a poker friend, uh, because of of my suggestion that he should keep his Bitcoin because he didn't know what to do with it. Because sometimes as a poker player, you know, you end up with Bitcoin. I used to get it for uh, poker students, whatever else, and yeah, he kept it. So he made a bunch of money off of Bitcoin, and you know, now he's like a professional drone racer, which is really cool. What up, Trillfinity? Yo, I, yeah, I'm definitely stacking McDavid cards. And NBA Top Shot is awesome. I love Top Shot. We could take a look at that in a little bit if you guys like. But that's a good-looking card, you know? That's not bad. Get out the way. What's up, Classic Pack Attack? Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, The uh, that was kind of a... I mean, we can't really call that pack a bust either, right? Two packs. We got a Cracked Ice, Shaq, and a Zion. Get out the way. You figure Zion get out the way has got to at least be, what, 20, 30 bucks or something? He went from Bitcoin to, yeah, he's a professional drone racer. Yeah, I, well, these things are crazy the way life works out. You know, you never would have figured that up or figured that out. You're like, hey, man, what are you doing with you? I'm a professional drone racer. Oh, we got some shiny. We got a silver back there, guys, and we didn't even, isn't it funny? I didn't even look at the name in the back. I like Kobe White, and I'd like to see what else he can do. Yo, what's up, Runner Up Warrior? How you doing? You got a purple Disco Zion? Yo, man, you need to trade me that. I got all kinds of stuff for trade. I need a purple Disco Zion for sure, Sam. Yo, hit me up on the Twitters. Let's talk, man. That's dope. Congratulations. You heard Bitcoin going up 100. Well, that's what they all say. Look, everybody is going to jump on the Bitcoin bandwagon. The thing about it is, is that there's always going to be somebody trying to pump things in their incentive based strategy. So what I mean by that is that if it incentivizes them to dissuade people from Bitcoin, if they're in a different position or they're into something else or Bitcoin would hurt their business, they're gonna be like, no, naysay, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But after they adopt it and they get all into Bitcoin, suddenly it's Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. So people will always play to what incentivize, what their incentives are. So think about that. Whatever somebody's incentive is, that's what they're going to try to convince you of. And I'm no different. Now go to Star Stock and deposit 10 bucks or whatever, and we can each get $10 free. And thank you to the guys who actually did that, because when I posted that video yesterday, I've actually made $70 
on Starstock. So seven people have gone and deposited, and I've gotten 10 bucks, and they've gotten 10 bucks. So that's really cool. I don't really have too many thoughts on Garland. I hear some people like him. Uh, we'll have to see how he pans out. I'd have to see more from him. I got a few other guys I've been researching. Anyway, back to the pack here. Sorry, guys. We got Chris Dunn. And I'm, my name is Chris, and I'm done rambling for a second. We got another Landry Shamit. What in the hell? That's not what we're looking for. Hamadou Diallo. Man, that is a, is a dope name. Uh, Joe Ingles. Underrated. Never flashy. A rookie card from the Heat. Is it Tyler Harrow? No, it's KZ Opolka. What? Why would you do that to me? NBA hoops. Here I thought we, we were getting somewhere together. You know what I mean? All right, what's the next guy? What, 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 what? It's a pacer. Is there, there's no one good on the Pacers. We'll just get rid of that card. Jeremy Lamb. All right, we got a green blazer cracked ice. Is it going to be my boy Damian Lillard? That's the only blazer I want to see. Cracked ice. No, it's an M. It's McCollum. Why, why would you do that to me, Hoops? <laughs> oh, man. I'm here for the PSA. Well, no problem, Maury. We're going to have more tutorials this week, my friend. Okay, guys. The McCollum is not bad. There's a Thunder... Who's on the Thunder that's a silver that we care about, though? That's the question. We know that it's a silver Thunder. So who's crackling in the rain? Is it a rookie? No, it's an Andre Roberson. That's a weird-looking one, but that's, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? Not the best action shot. It's not a rookie card, so what is this picture? What is this, man? It's not even numbered. Get this, get this shit out of my face. <laughs> I'm disrespecting it, dude. I'm disrespecting it. What's up, Will? Uh, yeah, McCollum's cool, but to be honest with you, he's my least favorite Blazer. Isn't that crazy? I like the Blazers. I love Damian Lillard. But but as far as McCollum goes, he's just my least favorite dude. I don't know. Whatever. All right, we got fake-ass Zion. We got cracked-ass Shaq. We need the real Zion. Also, if you guys would take a look at the graphics on the stream, let me know what you think of that. It would be really cool to get your opinion. I've been trying to do a little bit of upgrading here on the stream, so it would be pretty sweet to get some feedback. All right, let's see what we got in uh, pack... What is this, pack number four? Yeah, this is pack number four. All right, all right. That one was a bust. I like Anthony Simons. I don't think he's bad at all. Whoa, what is this? The Rockets? Is that like an insert or something? It's a James Harden of some sort. Real to real or some crazy shit? I don't know. I don't know. There's Chris Dapp's poor Zingus. If you're new to Bitcoin and crypto, stay away uh, day trading. You better prepared pay taxes. A lot of horrible story on Bitcoin and crypto. Yeah, obviously do your research, guys. Whenever you're monkeying around with anything like that, uh, the tax man's always coming to try to get a taste. So just be careful out there. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence on what's important and what isn't. And be careful with Coinbase. All right, there's Chris Dapp's Porzingis into Kelly Olynyk. These are these are crisp, man. And it's Jimmy Butler. Not a bad looking card. I like Jimmy Butler. I've been a fan of Jimmy Butler since he was on the Chicago Bulls and he was kicking ass. Is Harden going to Philly? No, I think Harden is just going to become a shooting coach because no one can play with James Harden. All he wants to do is hang out at strip clubs, man. He's literally the Dennis Rodman of basketball, but he doesn't have a Michael Jordan to win championships with. So what's he going to do? He's going to be a great scorer, and then he's just stuck. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? I like Patrick Williams, vintage baseball card packs. I'm a big fan of Patrick Williams. He's one of the guys that I'm looking to get, looking to pick up when the cards come out. Nothing. I don't like the draft stuff, but when the cards actually come out, I'm trying to get a taste of, of what Patrick Williams is cooking for sure. As a Sixers fan, I'm pretty hyped about Harden going to Philly. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. What up, Will? What up? You need to open more. The play-by-play -play is great. We're going to, guys. I'm actually ordering a breaking mat with the logo that has the same graphics as what I was uh, showing you guys, the new graphics or whatever. So I'm going to get a breaking mat. We're going to start doing that. We're going to start doing it. 1977 Star Wars with the plethora of shows coming. Well, Boba Fett just died as well. Is this a retail rip? Uh, yeah, this is a mega box. What up, X-Men Avenger? I was actually going to talk to you guys about that. I really do think that comic book cards are going to start coming back. Well, not that they ever came, but you know, I think that they're going to 
Any update on your $100? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no real updates to be had. There's a bunch of good stuff that I'll be selling on the low end, the low to mid end. And then uh, those 14, I think we sent nine out of the 14 Peyton Manning rookies into PSA. So they're into PSA right now. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're doing well on there for sure. But there was like nothing, you know, earth shaking. I think I'm selling the Donruss boxes for like $27 a piece or something. How about lightsabers? I like lightsabers. Yeah, 66 and 75 comic book heroes. You're right, E-Dog. That is a Nasir Little. Now, I've heard a little something about Nasir popping off lately. Now, what is this, a Cavaliers rookie? Is any anybody good over there on the Cavs? Dean Wade. What about Dwayne Wade? What about Dwayne Wade? That's what I want to know. I mean, they're advertising. Look at this. You know, Hoops, you're going to become my least favorite shit real quick if I see another advertisement on these cards. Because this dude's face is literally all up in the honey. And I'm not talking about a couple of breasts, man. What in the living F is this? Damn, dude. What in the hell? All right, guys, let's see what we got. What's the next one? It's the green. It's the green. It's another one. It better not be in the honey. It's a rookie. It's Darius Garland. Speaking of the Garland, that's not a bad card, right? That's a good one. That's a good-looking card. I like it. A little bit of that rookie cracked ice. And that's the James Harden in the back. And that is the lights, camera, action. And there's nothing quite special about that. That's just a, probably a $3 insert card. But it fits him, right? Because if he's the dude from Vegas, then lights, camera, action makes it a lot of sense. I would say that the uh, the Darius Garland is probably a semi-banger. I would call that a low-roll banger. They are undervalued boxing rookie cards like Mike Tyson, Manny Pack. What? Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's a place for those cards. I think that the comic book cards can come back because you guys have to think about, you know, whenever we were kids or whichever ones uh, kind of resonate with this idea, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, all that type of shit, uh, it goes cyclically, right? So then the next thing, the next group of people, they were all into the Harry Potter and all of the, uh, you know, all the superhero movies. So I would expect items from those types of collectibles to just keep going. And obviously comic books and whatnot are great, but I mean, hey, you can have a first appearance of Batman, and you can also have a Batman rookie card. You can have a Spider-Man rookie card. So there, there's definitely some potential there. Yeah, we got a few few okay guys. So, so, so far, I don't think we've gotten the value back. We're halfway through. And out of the 140 value, we're going to call it for the retail. What do we have? Maybe maybe 15 or something on Garland? Maybe like 20 on Zion? Maybe like $45 in value, right? So we're back by like 30 bucks or so, maybe? Yeah, guys, as far as the submissions go to, to PSA, let me say something to you. Can I say something to you? I can show you guys where I've submitted a bulk order on June 6th or something like that. It's back in June. And it still isn't out of research and ID. And I'll tell you what, when I talked to them because they damaged my card, PSA damaged this Lamar Jackson. Whenever I showed you guys my latest uh, PSA return video, I didn't have this included, but this came back a, a PSA 5, this tasty 2018 Donruss Optic Lamar Jackson. What's up, Flip and Steve? Good evening, my friend. How are you? And when you look at the back of the card, you can see the side by where it says Rated Rookie, and it's just completely creased, like someone bent the living hell out of it. I can't really get the angle here very well, but um, that's why the card got the grade that it did, and I definitely did not send the card in in that condition. So I've talked to them. I was supposed to hear back within five business days. I think we're on business day seven or eight. I haven't heard back from them, uh, so we're going to have to deal with that. But, yeah, there it's still in research and ID, and when I talked to the guy... What he told me is that they have like 130 bulk orders from back when everything was crazy backed up and they're not touching them until the new year. So unfortunately, I have two orders, about 150 cards, and it's in that group. And I don't like that. I don't like that you just stop to do other shit. You know what I mean? Yo, I'll buy that card for $5. I'd buy that for a dollar. Which one? The Optic? What's up, man? Thank you very much for that. What is it called? A sweet chat? A smart chat? I don't know what it is, but thank you very much. 
I appreciate that. And guys, I did turn on members. So like in Twitch streams, you can sub to people. I've turned the membership stuff on so you can sub here. I'm not sure how often that's going to be relevant, but if you do want to, you certainly can. Maybe we'll have some sub streams where only the subscribers can talk and we'll talk strategy and sports card, this and that, or collectibles, whatever it is. Super chat. There you go. Appreciate that, Mo Ray. If you guys want to check out my friend Maury's stream, and uh, he's a Twitch streamer, and he also has, he's going to do comic book content on YouTube. So if you guys are into that, check him out as well. We've got Luke Kennard, but see, I would say it Kennard, but it's, it's probably Kennard. <laughs> Not only stop, but let people who pay more cut in line BS. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that, man. You have to anticipate next wave. Right. Exactly, exactly. You're going SGC? Yeah, X-Men Avenger, but the problem with that is then the cards are maybe going to come back to you quicker, but the value won't be there. I'm okay waiting. I just want you to be fair, and I want you to be reasonable, you know? I don't want to have to deal with a middleman. I don't want to have to deal with somebody else submitting my cards. As much as I like Starstock, and I like the idea, they submit cards, and I don't really like the process. I don't, I don't want somebody else submitting my cards. There's no reason to have to go through a middleman. You can just do it yourself. There's Spencer Dinwiddie. Yusuf Nurkic. Now, this dude's rookie cards could definitely go up. If there were YouTuber trading cards, how much would a Vegas Finds rookie card be worth? You'd have to go all the way back to my Playboys in the refrigerator video, Mosaic Mind. That would be my, my rookie video, and I'll have to dig that out on Twitch sometime. <laughs> it's a long story. All right, guys. Jaleel Okafor. If you guys were breaking back in 2015, you might remember that this dude was one of the hyped up beasts. Everybody and their brother in breaks were paying the big money so that they could get their Jaleel Okafor rookie cards. And for you two dudes that are new to the hobby, this dude was the talk of the town. And where did he go? Let's see what sort of advertisement is in the picture. J. Rue's crew. All right, no advertisement there. I don't know. I'm sure they're advertising something. Seku Demboya. Now, that's cool. I'm happy to pick up this guy's rookie card. I like this. I really do like hoops. Playboy mags are best kept cold. That's right, Willis. Yo, we got some fans. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He was a 76 or B. Oh, we got another silver back here, guys. And I'm not talking about a, you know, gorilla. I keep have to. It's a silver back here. I always make that joke. He's a Jabari Parker. Yeah, that dude was going to be a beast as well. <laughs> I'm rolling and dying over the first video comment. What is it? Did anybody, somebody made a comment on the video? Let me see, man. Let me see. Somebody, somebody made a comment or something? What's, what's all this about? <laughs> Let me go see what we're working with here, folks. Let me turn this down so I don't want to get any double jive. And why does it hashtag poker? We're not playing comment poker. Is it really hashtagged poker? I don't see any comments at all, man. What's so funny about that? All right. No, mine. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So there's Seku. And here's the reason why I like NBA Hoops. I think it's a better product and a better brand than Mosaic. And I think that it can definitely, for now, maybe take Select and Optics type of a place. Like, Optic is cool, but I really do prefer the NBA Hoops. Because, I mean, it's a similar. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> your comment, dude. Your story. I got you. I got you. Uh, so, you, you know, you got Donruss paper base, and then you have the uh, optic. And I think that this same sort of thing, but I like it. I'm a fan of it. There's a Kevin Durant for you. It's a Durant tribute. Look at that glassy surface. I'm going to have to sleeve that one up. I know it's not expensive, but, I mean, if I could grade this card and it comes back a PSA 10, I'll bet this card is probably, you know, $30, $50 or something like that in a 10. But how boring is, is Kevin Durant? Look at him. Hey, man, you going to shoot the ball or something? Nah, I'm going to just stand around. So we're going to sleeve those up. But who who's back here, though? Who's back here? What, what's this? A Timberwolf. Anybody anybody good in the Timberwolf? Hi, Malik Beasley. Oh, oh, Malik. I don't know, dude. Glad I caught this. What up, Broad Street Puck? How the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> All right, so we got Durant... And we got a Seku Demboya, Chef Boyardee. Is that what we're going to call him? Chef Demboyardee? You like a Chef Demboyardee? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. 
That's one thing that I hate. I hate it when these companies are, and it, by companies I mean Panini, I hate it when they're lazy and they take one picture that they bought of the guy and they put it in like eight different products, man. I would expect to see a Kevin Durant football card on a mosaic background. You know, just get out of here. That's one thing I like about hoops is that they can't make a football product with this design, right? NFL hoops. It doesn't work, dummy. It's NBA hoops. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, get out of my face. So who's the silver, though? That's that's the real question. Who's the silver card back here behind Malik Beasley? It's a rookie card, guys. We have a 76ers silver... Is it Matisse? Is it Matisse? It is. That's not a bad one. This dude's got some potential, right? That's not a bad card to get. That's probably a $20 card. I'm going to temper my expectations, but that, that's not bad. It's not silver prism. This dude's got some groove kicking yeah. I think you have a lot of that though with the dimples what I have a problem with these days and these products in general are all of the print lines man like fix your roller you ever you guys know you roll up into a fast food joint and and you get something fried and you can tell that the oil's been sitting there for seven years man you can just tell that it's old ass oil they may have even rented it or bought it from another place and it's just like fix your print line you know whoever's doing all this printing just take care of it it's not that difficult you guys are getting like fifteen thousand dollars for a box all right you can fix the print lines dude all right, so that's not a bad card. That's not bad. We got a couple decent cards, guys. I wish the Zion was the silver rookie. But we're, we got three packs left, my friends. Three packs left. Old ass oil. Yeah, exactly. At some point, you need to share some poker war stories. Hey, ask away, dude. What kind of, uh, what kind of question do you have about the old poker days? I'd be glad to answer. We're going to start this pack off. Oh, is that a green? And then another... Silvery, fresh looking. I don't know what that is in the back, but it looks crazy. They should have kiosks, machines, PSA version, scan iPhone. Is coming. I wonder iPhone word. <laughs> there you go. Well, you never know, man. I'm sure something. I'm sure something will happen in the future. I mean, it's going to take a bit for that sort of AI to get to the biggest place. Biggest swings. What up, Nemos? I mean, when I was playing live in Vegas, deep two five at the win, for instance, the swings would be. Sometimes two to three thousand dollars a day, in fact, oftentimes, and you would swing up or down fifteen thousand a week. Biggest hand win at a cash game table, uh, probably around eight K in one pot. Remember, I didn't play high stakes poker, the highest stakes I ever played was five ten uh, online, and the biggest pot I ever won there was about seven, seven to eight thousand dollars. So, not really a high roller, guys, but but pretty good at the game and good enough to teach it for sure. Uh, PJ Tucker in two, Lori Markannon. More cannon. The entire card community should mail our damaged cards to Panini. <laughs> well, I think it's really important to hold people accountable. I mean, I, I, I saw Starstock earlier, and I asked them a question related to their submission for PSA. I don't know. If they are, you know, that's okay with me. <laughs> Hello out there, everybody. But, um... Yeah, so I think that it's just important to hold people accountable, you know? When you're paying money for a product or a service, it's really important to hold whoever's on the other side accountable because if you don't, they will never improve. They will never improve because the cost of improving comes at the loss of money. So when you do something wrong in life, what happens to you? Oh, you get fined. Oh, you get taxed. Oh, you screwed up. Boom, it costs you money. And over time, you learn, hey, I don't want these speed bumps, so I'm going to get out of the way or protect myself by not doing shit that's dumb so if a company screws up then you have to hold them accountable or they'll just keep doing it and they'll exploit you by providing a subpar service so that's why i'm very very big on taking it to them so to speak even if you don't grade card people are selling high price unguard yeah exactly well i mean that but but that you know it's it's all supply and demand it's all supply and demand man if nobody wanted it nobody would pay the prices Kawhi leonard Jeremy Grant, and from there, it's just a, it's a incorrect perception of value, either now or in the future, or they have too much money to care. Jeremy Grant into a Talon Horton Tucker, that's not a bad one to get. Ding, 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 ding. Boom, if I had a bell, I would hit the, in fact, I'm gonna get a bell. I'm gonna get a bell. So we're gonna see who's behind the Talon Horton, oh, don't show me the green, man. 
Keep it, keep it. Oh, there's a Kobe White right behind him. Whoa, we get the one-two punch. What? And there's a Pelican behind that. There's a Pelican behind that. I don't know if it's a rookie, though. Look at that. We got Kobe and Horton Tucker. Yeah, I don't know if Horton Tucker is going to have anything too crazy going on uh, mid to long term. Who knows? But he seems like he's a pretty good player from what we've seen. So I don't, I don't mind picking up a few of his cards. And I did find this right here on eBay. And this was after the explosion. I found this card. How much do you... Okay, let me know when we are back, my friends. Let me know when we are back. I don't know if it's randomly the internet or what. Pissing me off, man. I thought it was me. No, Anderson, it's not you. That pack was so good it crashed the internet. It seems like it, Steve. It seems like it. So what do you guys think we paid for this? Talon Horton Tucker Reactive Blue Mosaic Prism. Thank you, thank you. Good to be back. Hello and welcome, friends. Or we'll get the Elvis version up in here. Hold on, what's up? Hello, and welcome, friends. Yeah, you right, you right. I paid $4 for this card. Four funky-ass dollars after it blew up. Is that your new logo on the thumbnail? Uh, yeah, I think you can see it on... Well, it's part of it. I think that's a variation of it. But I think that's what I'm going to get for the breaking background or something like that. Yeah, it's a nice card. <laughs> But yeah, all right, let's see, guys. We'll be, oh, yeah, one, one other quick card to show you guys. I got this Russell Westbrook. I don't know if you guys are into patch cards. I know some people like them. Some people don't. I think they're kind of an unexplored area of the hobby other than the expensive high-end autograph patch cards. And I really like these older select, older, it's like fucking seven years old. I like these older select cards. They look so good. I mean, that is just an amazing card. Out of 99, I might have paid $7 for this. I mean, that that's enjoyment right there, my friends. Most of these expensive cards will go down five years. Well, some will and some won't. A lot of them will, for sure. But that's just kind of the natural ebb and flow of things. All right, guys. It's a, it's a, it's a pelican. It's a pelican behind our friend Kobe White. But it's not a rookie card, it doesn't look like. So I don't think we can get Zion. I think we're probably screwed. It's Lonzo Ball. I mean, it's not the worst. What's Julius Irving rookie card? Oh, I sold Julius. We, we sold him. So the Lonzo Ball is not that bad. And then there's one of those lights, camera, actions back here of Julius Randle. Yeah, that pack kind of took a turn for the worse, so to speak. But hey, you can't really complain. The Kobe White and the Horton Tucker, I mean, that's a, a decent amount, right? Kobe White's got to be at least $12 or $15 by now. He's heating up for sure. And if we can get these graded and, and get a nice return on them that way, that would be great. Because they're obviously really clean right now. And I'll tell you, when these cards, these silver cards, even in a penny sleeve, right up at the top, they tend to get really dirty really quickly. So there, that's a good. That was a good pack, though. Kobe, Talon, and then Alonzo cracked ice. They are pretty expensive. They're getting expensive. The lowest valued base cards are like five to seven dollars. So, you know, it, it's nothing crazy. Kind of consolidate here. So, what do you think the best card is so far, guys? It's not Talon. It's Kobe's better than that. I think the Matisse Silver is pretty close. And then the Zion, it's got to be between the Zion and the Matisse, probably some, probably Matisse Silver. You're making me want to rip packs? I love ripping packs, dude. All right, we got two packs left, my friends. Two packs left. Oh, God. We need a big hit, a big hit. We haven't had any big hits yet. We've had a couple of nice cards, but a big, a Jaleel Okafor on the back, and it's a prism. Mother... Come on, dude. We just talked about how this dude sucked. 
We literally just said that this guy was not that good. And and this is what you're doing to me. Michael Porter Jr. Gordon Hayward. You handle cards like a poker player? I am a poker player and a magic player. So it, it makes a lot of sense. I like to squeeze them, Steve. What I like to do is, is get them like this, right? And then put them down on the table and then just squeeze them. I just... Yep, it's silver. It's a silver rookie! <laughs> and then when, it, when it's a horrible card, I just toss it in the muck. Muck it. Gordon Hayward. Why? Why, Charlotte? I don't play modern, Matt. No. I don't really play Magic that much anymore. Come on, what is the deal here, Gordon? You know? I mean, I don't know why the Hornets picked you up for the price that they did. That has to be the worst deal I've ever seen in my entire life. Dude is perpetually injured. Even when he's not, he doesn't have the capabilities to, to lead a team to victory. I mean, it's it's crazy. There's another Lonzo ball, so we're doubling down on Lonzo. We have a Celtics rookie, and it's Taco Fall. This dude's like 70 feet tall, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. All right. What is it going to be? It's a wizard. It's Mo Wagner. Or Moritz Wagner. This guy's actually not that bad. So let's see. Oh, oh, what is that? Is that a... It's a rookie card for the Hawks. It's a green cracked ice of some Hawks dude. Who's it going to be? It's Cam Reddish. That's not a bad one, right? A lot of people are kind of hyped up on Cam Reddish a bit. It's pretty good. Could be worse than a green cracked ice there. And what's the last card? It looks like a scope prism. And it's Jaleel Okafor. <laughs> we already knew it was Jaleel. No, screw you. I don't want my only scope prism to be this dude. Come on, man. I didn't even get a single numbered card out of this entire retail box at this point. You play any sports betting in Las Vegas? Uh, I, I do it the occasional sports bet, but it's really not my forte, honestly. I'm good at poker cash games, uh, sometimes tournaments, but for the most part, I, I don't really do the sports betting thing. I might start doing more of it. I might start doing more of it. There's Taco. I don't know what the juice is on that. And we're coming down to our final pack, my friends. Man, this pack didn't want to come out of the box. I wonder what's inside. Now, honestly, we haven't really gotten anything that mind-numbingly good out of here. The Matisse Silver is pretty nice. Zion, whatever. Cam, okay, okay. Kobe, Horton Tucker. I mean, we didn't get a dud. Seku, there's definitely some value to be had here. But it can't be that expensive. Cracked Ice. Cracked Ice rookies are okay. The box costs 140 <clears throat> yeah yeah exactly they were only they were done with numbered i don't know i don't know you are due for a big one all right let's see guys i don't want to look at the uh i don't want to look at the name on the card or anything okay who do we get here Otto porter jr do we have anything really sick looking back here do we have like a silver or anything there's a gold there's a gold card back there what the last card, the very last card is gold. I don't know if it's like an actual gold or if it's just some nonsense. So who knows? All right. Otto Porter Jr. I remember when this guy was good on the Wizards. Ivica Zubak. This dude's actually not that bad. He, he definitely has some steam floating around in his gas tank. All right. What is this? RJ Barrett. No, Julius Randle again. Come on, man. What is that? What is that? Who is it? Bring it to me, baby. Mark Gasol, the Lakers, Grizzlies, Raptors guy. All right, what's next? What's next? It's a Pelican. Is it a rookie card? It's a rookie Pelican. We have a rookie. We have a Pelican. Oh, my God. It better not be that same dude. I don't know what the Zion looks like. So let's, let's see if we can kind of creep up on it man better not be an advertisement over here who is it anybody it says J jackson hayes get out of my face with this what in the hell man they're really letting me down here <laughs> what jeremy grant 
What? How did they... Nicholas Claxton? What are you, piggybacking on Jackson Hayes, man? All right, dudes. Is there anything good with this gold card in the back? It's gold. It doesn't look like... It better not be some sort of stupid insert. It looks like a stupid insert. It's Tyler Harrow of the Heat. Look, it says Tyler and it says Heat. So maybe that's just a gold background? Does anybody know what this is? It's just like a some stupid insert? It looks like it's an airplane. So it's got to just be a stupid insert. Arriving now. So it's dumb, right? What? What? <laughs> Arriving now. <laughs> What else would he get here? What do you mean arriving now? Come on. This is a good one? <laughs> arriving now? Well, where else would he be? Arriving now. <laughs> you have arrived. Is it numbered? No. Oh, but the print lines. Yo, bitch. I'm not down with these print lines on all of these cards, man. You're really screwing up my PSA mojo. I got a gem mint surface. And a PSA 6 card back. God damn. It's a rookie insert set. You know, it's it's not as cool as Emergent. I think that's probably one of the better rookie insert sets. So, we did get the names that we were looking for. Unfortunately, we just got base versions of them. Is that dust? All right. How much value do you guys think we get out of this box? <laughs> Harrow just became an NBA Top Shot spokesman? No, he didn't. Did he? I don't even know that. Not into Top Shot. Come on, man. Don't mess with me, Isaac. <laughs> 99 viewers, 17 likes. Let's go, guys. That's what. That's right. That's what's up. Mediocre value, two bucks. I don't know. What do you guys think? The box is too expensive? It, absolutely. But now, think about it like this, guys. If this box was $140, which it was, we're like, eh, you know, we're drowning here. We're drowning in, in piss-poor, mediocre equity. But if this box was $40, this would be amazing. This would be awesome. Yeah, guys, I like Star Stock. You know, there's some good and there's some bad. I like the ability to instantly flip. I like all of that. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about Star Stock is that they charge you $30 to get a card graded, first of all. That's astronomical. I mean, you can submit them yourself in bulk, wait seven months or whatever, and get it for $12 to $15. So why the hell am I going to pay you $30? You know? and, and then the next thing is that they charge you up front. For the cards to get graded that's the other thing and i asked him on twitter i said hey man why do you guys charge up front literally every submission service charges you when the cards get back because it takes like seven or eight months to get the cards anyway even if it only took four or five months and they basically said something to the you know well we don't have to chase you down for the money and i was like chase me down for the money don't you think people want to get their cards that they sent in with you to be graded back are they just not going to pay? I mean, that just sounds like some storage wars shit, right? I got this storage unit, and it's full of all kinds of good expensive items, but you know what? They're going to have to auction it because I don't have the $100. <laughs> so it's uh, and no slight on Starstock. It's whatever. They'll figure out the process eventually. The core of the site, I like. The core of the site is good. But as far as their grading, I would not be involved. And as far as the Starstock A, B, and C... I think it's also important to note there that oftentimes Star Stock A is more expensive than an eBay listing. And granted, with eBay, you're not getting any sort of pre-grading. You have to kind of do that yourself. Same thing with Comp C. You have to go to Comp C and you have to hunt the card down yourself, take a look at it, see what you can figure out, and then gamble and buy the card. So at least they're sort of pre-grading it a little bit. But nonetheless, you know, those Star Stock A prices can be a good bit more expensive than an eBay listing. So I wouldn't say that, you know, you should just go and buy every one of these or every one of those. I think you should just find the cards that make sense and then try to get those. They don't sell vintage yet. Yeah, exactly. It draws a premium. Exactly. But, I mean, if they're not guaranteeing the grade, so that's just an opinion. And you know that, that grading is super harsh. 
So, I mean, you could get a star stock A that comes back an 8, and you could have spiked a PSA 10 from an eBay listing. So, at the end of the day, it's really what your trained eye can see, and then finding those, you know, those good nooks and crannies. Right, of course, yeah, they, they pay for peace of mind for sure. I'm not saying it's not warranted or that it, you know, it's like, again, I like star stock. I just, I always like to vet things and I like to analyze this and that because I want to know what the best is uh, for the, the time and the money spent. So yeah, uh, arriving now, Tyler Harrow, not, I mean, I guess, I mean, you're on an airplane, you're flying around. Isn't he arriving now like every other night? Like, don't they fly around and play in other places? How aged does this dude look in this picture? Look at that. He literally looks like a villain from a horror movie. Does Starstock have more than basketball? They do. It's a sports card stock market, but they don't have any hockey cards. They have soccer, they have football, they have baseball, they have basketball, but not hockey. What are you going to do? Uh, Zion. Let's, let's actually take a look at this Zion get out the way and see what it goes for over here on eBay real quick. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to look up hoops. Zion, get out the way. Get my fat arm out the way. Oh, shit. That's a $45 card. What? Damn, I didn't know it was like that. What? This thing goes for 45 bucks? Get out the way. No, there were no autographs, Alpha. Mariota base prisms hit 75 in star stock a last night. Oh man, that's so funny. Mariota and Winston were so hyped up. Mariota's just been sitting there doing nothing for so long. Finally gets a taste. You know the funny part? We were at Raiders Stadium last night, driving around it while they were in uh, while they were in overtime, but we couldn't get in and see anything. We were trying to get in and try to get some filming done, and there was cops everywhere. But yeah car gonna get released that would be that would be pretty weird <laughs> so yeah zion forty dollars that's that's not bad right i think that gretzky's for two mil is, is i mean gretzky's the greatest of all time i mean his stats are insane so let's see who okay so arriving now harrow let me get that plane ticket blah it's Oh, no, it's the premium one. Okay, okay. The regular one goes for $4. I was like, what? No. What? If this was a purple hollow, it would be worth 150 Well, they look like they're pretty rare. Silver 90 This is a $50 card? One went for 25 One went for 30 and one went for 45 or 50. Can I say something to you? If there is anyone out there that's paying $30 for this card, I am going to shove it so far up their ass, they're going to taste cardboard for the next five frozen pizzas. That is going to absolutely happen. There's no way in hell. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that joke, but man. Remember how new this set is. You're right, you're right. But I got to tell you, the Zion may have value to hold, right? But the arriving now at the $30 price point, I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah, that was a good flip, man, for sure. $120 bucks on, a, on a Contenders. I've never liked Contenders. All right, well, that's not bad. I don't mind that. Let's see. If that's the case, then I'm really excited to see this Matisse. Premium silver. What you got for me, man? You got anything tasty? No, no, not the Pulsar. I mean the real deal silver. Not the Mojo. There isn't one up there. But the, the scope, they want $199 for the scope. Huh? What kind of nonsense is this? Misspell, dude. People pay crazy. People around me are buying those megas for 165. Yeah, I got in touch with Legacy uh, down at you know the place where I have the the showcase. 
And they said that they had a couple of them for 185. Not my jive, not my jive. So I was lucky enough to have a, a friend who had an extra one floating around for 140. And it, it looks like we're getting our money back if if that right there is 70 bucks, right? And then who knows what the Matisse is. I'm going to look up a couple more of these guys just because, I mean, it's it's interesting to see, right? So the next dude is the Cam Reddish Cracked Ice. What? No. 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 You what? What are you talking about? And to your point, uh, low roller scratcher, maybe they'll be worth under $2 10 years from now, but that's not the case right now. Right now, they are worth selling out the door. Because remember, guys, it doesn't matter what it's worth long term if you're not just leaving it in a box somewhere under a bed for that term. It's all about now, playing the game now, the ebbs and the flows of the rise and the fall of the market, the flips and the dips. This right here, the cheapest one on eBay, is $80. $80 for the cheapest green cracked ice cam reddish. What? $130, $150. That right there is profit. Right there. That right there is profit on the box if that's indeed the case. Man, if this is it, I'm going out and I'm paying $400 a mega box. Wonder what the Greg Jeffries card. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Last sold? None of them have sold. I don't think. Yeah, none of these have sold, but that's also because it's it's new. So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe it goes for fifty dollars. Either way, I got you one thirty all day, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but man, retail is forty dollars, man. Who got me for seventy five? What's up? <laughs> Maybe maybe Broad Street Pug. If I need to if I need to fulfill another evening of these, you know, I, I could and, and we got some good rookies, right? There's Seku, Kobe, and Talon. So let's see what those are worth. Alright, Seku. These seem to be worth more than the damn pulsars even, which makes no sense. Fourteen dollars the cheapest for the Seku. Obviously, sold listings will probably be cheaper. Kobe White, I would expect to be probably 15 bucks or something. You can get one of these for $12. The Seku is more expensive than the Kobe White. That doesn't make sense to me, I don't think. And then Taylor Horton Tucker, who knows? He's probably another $12 guy. Yeah, 10, 10 bucks, 11 bucks, something like that. All right, well, uh, we're not going to look that one up. Obviously, Duran is whatever. We'll check out the Darius Garland. All right, all right. I won't. I won't, dude. Hit me up on Twitter, Broad Street. You know what I'm saying? Let me get them digits, dog. Hit me up on that Twitter. This one hasn't sold or been around or whatever, and who knows? It's Shaq. I feel like as good as Shaq is, I think that the perception of Shaq is more than the actual of Shaq. Because to me, it seems like a lot of his cards just aren't worth that much. And then you have a few cards that are worth pretty good. You know, they're a pretty good amount. But I think we, we've done pretty well in that box, guys. I mean, you can't really complain. Three decent rookies, Cam Reddish, Cracked Ice, and then you got these other guys. So I, I think, yeah, it was good. It would have been really good for $40, but I guess that's why the boxes are so expensive. Zion has 21 midway through the third. Yeah, dude. Man, I've got... See, the, the thing is, is that I'm late to the buy Zion boat. I've had some Zion uh, information for a bit right now. Not that I'm like James Bond or anything. But I've had two or three guys that I've just been kind of picking up on the back end. And Zion has been one of them. But I, I have a very specific Zion card or two that, uh, that I've been picking up more than others. And that I'll probably reveal in a video here in a day or two. 
You don't got a Twitter? I can hit you up on Discord. All right, man, that's cool. You, my Discord's down there. If you guys want to join me, I am quite active on Twitter or Discord. So if you guys, I really don't do Instagram as much. I think I get the most messages on Instagram from people, but like I don't, that's where I do the least because I just don't know the format as well. But um, Twitter, I'm all over the place. Uh, Discord, you guys are certainly welcome to join the Discord, hang out, chat it up, whatever. And yeah, let, let's take a look at it. Let me see, maybe I can get some star stock or something going on over here see what i can do for y'all this is that and that is this i also have a newsletter i haven't sent one out yet but i'm going to be starting to send the newsletter out guys it should be kind of cool uh, kind of fun and also if i have some breaking piece of news information that i want to share with you it'll be a lot easier to just send a newsletter out real quick and be like hey guys here's the breaking news than making like a five minute video and going through all that nonsense or whatever just to get like one little point or piece of information across yeah so yeah the, the star stock a stuff is is definitely higher price like we were talking about and i'm not i'm not sure that it's uh that it's warranted like maybe maybe it is maybe it is like steve said people pay for that peace of mind but for me i'm resistant to it because i like finding the diamonds in the rough so to speak let me get you guys over here to the whoa main screen for a second how does that look does that look good you guys can see the star stock jam lamello psa 10s of zion yeah 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 for sure man I have I have two cards that I own on my Starstock account. You guys want to see the two cards that I own? I own a Kobe White Emergent Green that I bought for ten bucks, and I own this Bull Bull Choice Red and Green. Because <clears throat> anytime you're looking at a platform, you can find mistakes between platforms that people make. So back in the mid 2000s, I used to buy e video game collections on eBay. You know, people would have them from their kids going to college, whatever it was. They would put up a big collection of Nintendo, like 40 Nintendo games, system gun, all that stuff, and it would run you like 100 bucks sometimes. And you could break that collection down and you could sell it on Amazon and you could quadruple five times your money. Because the people that were buying on Amazon were a completely different market than the people that were selling on eBay. And it really kind of translates here as well. So, I mean, it's not just going to be, you know, a really clean thing to do because the people that are using Star Stock at this point, I'm assuming, are more uh, hands-on. So, the people that use this are people that are in the game. They're trying to flip. They're trying to win money, basically, in the card market. So, if that's the case, then until Star Stock becomes a mainstream thing and you get way more casual users, the people that are on here, the prices are going to be more accurate and they're going to be more inflated potentially uh, than if you had some you know, casual person who just wanted 20 bucks so they could buy another couple of packs of something. So uh, you know, you're always trying to find ways to sort of exploit between the two markets. And I found this bull bull on here for 50 bucks earlier. And if you guys look this up on eBay, this one goes for, you know, $130. One was best offer, $150 off of $200. <clears throat> Yo, what's up, Ziggy? How you doing, man? Yes, we need more people on Starstock. Yo, Sam, you're going to trade me that Zion, right? I got a bunch of stuff, man. We got to talk about that. Purple Zion is a very nice card. How are you, Ziggy? What's going on this evening, my friend? Yeah, we do. We do. I, I think it would be good for the market. I think it would be good for the people overall because the people who are really hardcore trying to make money either flipping or investing, it's just a small piece of the rest of the market. And it was like that with Magic the Gathering for a long time as well. Uh, now it's pretty financially based magic, but it didn't used to be. And there were way more casual people. So when you get more casual collectors using Star Stock both to sell and to buy, then you're going to have a softer site, so to speak. Like if you're playing on a poker site and the incentives were for professional players, for people who would grind a lot, and then you had the most of the players coming from people who knew other people, then you would have a difficult site to play on. So the toughness of the games would prevent you from making a bunch of money, and the money that you would get from the bonuses or the rake back, that's where your value would come from. But you know, in this spot, it's kind of the same thing with Starstock right now. 
And as more people are aware of it, the softer the site will be. Show us your star stock collection. Here it is. That's it. <clears throat> they need to add to the... Yeah, exactly. That would, <laughs> that would get them in. Yeah, they should definitely add magic. They should add Pokemon. They should add hockey. Let's add hockey. You ever heard of Connor McDavid? But um, this is my collection, man. I, I literally have two cards on Starstock. There you go. See, I have twenty dollars in my account balance, and I've spent sixty. So I have eighty dollars, and that is from the good people who have made deposits on Starstock from my video yesterday. I didn't even have to deposit on Starstock. I think I could take this bowl bowl and I could put it up for probably 120 and get it sold. So looking for little spots like that, you know, searching up a player who is popular, who has some hype and is more like a loaded pinball, you know, like if bowl bowl goes off and has an amazing game, his cards for a, a small window are just going to shoot up. Right. So he's kind of like a pinball loaded, just ready to. <laughs> Hockey season starts January 13th. That's awesome. Uh, no, if they were physically in my possession, they wouldn't be on Starstock, Mosaic Mind. People sent these cards in to Starstock, the initial ingestion person who sends it in, and then they're listed, and Starstock has them in their vault until somebody decides to cash them out. So I could go around buying and selling and trading on Starstock all day every day, and I could end up with $8,000 in my account off of a $10 investment if I was good enough and there were enough transactions to do so. So star stock and the format, it really does remind me of poker in that sense in that you are trying to find patterns to exploit. So if you were doing your research and I was in this SI, BBC, whatever that is, uh, BBW, what I would do is I would try to find games that I thought were going to move the market or move the hype. If not so much for casual collectors, but also for the people who are on star stock. When you're looking at things like this, you want to look at how it works, how it functions from a mechanical perspective. So if the movement on star stock is going to come from people finding good deals because they think they can get more like this one or from people reacting to hype that are investors and are sharps and they think they're going to get more for a window, then we have to kind of work within that frame of what we can do as far as what we're listing, what we're buying, trying to find those nooks and those crannies. <clears throat> I heard all hockey might be in the USA. That would be interesting, Ziggy. That would be pretty weird. It would be definitely be pretty interesting. How about MMA cards? What up, baby Swagoo? I think that uh, I think MMA cards are okay, but they're kind of limited. You know, like they don't really have a lot of the uh, they don't really have a lot of fights. They're not like every other day. A guy only fights a couple times a year, so it's pretty difficult to to get past that that hump. You know, like in the NBA, you're seeing guys every other night. And it's difficult because, I mean, yeah, you can have a guy like Floyd Mayweather that's a boxer, or you can have a guy like Conor McGregor who's all over the media and causes a lot of media stir. Sure, those types of guys are more likely to get attention, so that's really what it's all about. Where's the attention going to come from? Where's the demand going to come from? And how is that going to change the market? More time on the Internet. Dude, all you have these days is time on the Internet. I mean, honestly, where else is time if not on the internet? Nobody can leave their homes because of coronavirus. Everything is now on the internet. Even the movie places are like, well, people aren't going to go to the theaters, so we have to make a deal with the streaming services. And I believe that Netflix is raising their price to like $18 or something from 9 Man, when Netflix was under $10, I was like, okay, whatever. I'm obviously in. The wife likes it. It's, it is what it is. I occasionally find a show... But for the most part, I was trying to find something to accept watching. You ever notice that? You go on Netflix and you're like, nah, nah, nah. Okay, I guess I'll accept watching this. It shouldn't be like that. You should want to watch something or find something better to do with your time. So when Netflix hits the $18 price point, whoosh, I'm out the dough. Right here, bam. Get out the way. <laughs> I'm gone. How far back does Star Stock go? Why so many people are gambling some money on Bitcoin due to the lockdown? Yeah, sometimes uh, that is the case, yes. But, you know, Bitcoin's been there for a long time, man. But if let's go to Star Stock here and see what sort of activity 
they have. So the one thing that I do like about Starstock is that you can see what the latest listings are. And if you're on eBay, if you're trying to snipe mistakes that other people are making, the best way to do it is to be there first. So you can search up for, you know, let's say for instance, Jason Tatum. You could look at all of Jason Tatum's cards. You could price check them all on eBay versus condition, whatever else. Or you could be there first on a guy that you don't think other people are on that you think is going to increase in value. That's another way. Or somebody could just play like flat out list something too cheap and you could be there first. So there's, uh, there's some, let me see, let me click marketplace. I know there's a way to search. Maybe it's view more. And then over here, you can sort by featured. I don't want featured. I don't want new arrivals. See the latest additions to the Starstock vault. Don't care about that. I would like to see the latest listings. Find new cards for sale. On Starstock, would you recommend buying blaster boxes and such? It all depends. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. And that probably doesn't have Starstock A, B, or C grade, right? Uh, it depends on the price. It depends on the product. So right here, Sekou uh, Demboya, 67 of these in the stock or in the vault, 44 for sale in Starstock A for 425. So let's say that you knew that he was going to get more minutes than anybody else. He was going to get a really good hyped game against a decent team, whatever it was. You could come on here and buy these up for four bucks a piece. You click on it, and it brings you to the interface. And you could just, you could also corner the market in spots like this. You know, granted, there's a lot of them here. So if 425, for instance, there's only one, 475, 480, where does it really start to get prohibitive? I would say under $8. So you could, if they were all four, obviously they range up, but if they all were $4, you could buy all of them and then relist them all at 775 to undercut the guy at $8. That's one strategy that you could employ. So you're cornering the market and you're just assuming that the demand will be there enough that you can sell enough of those to kind of cover and pay. So that, that's one strategy. But I mean, that's, that's not a bad price for that. I mean, I, I really, as much as I don't mind the mosaic look, it just feels out of place, you know? Hoops is better, the Hoops Premium I like, but I don't know about Mosaic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Starstock probably should advertise on fantasy sports sites. It definitely has a, a pokerish, gamblish kind of feel to it. I guess my other concern would be I want to see the actual card whenever, like at some point in time, you know? Because if, if it never leaves Starstock and their vault, then we can never really know that it's still there. So I think that there should be some sort of a something, you know, like let's say that I send a card in to Starstock and it's like a $75 card and it sits on Starstock. Somebody else buys it for 75, 80 bucks, whatever. Uh, they put it in their vault. They leave it in their vault and then they make it available for sale for a hundred. Slowly the card goes up. Other guy buys it for a hundred, leaves it in his vault. Two years go by, and now they're paying 125 for the card, but we've never seen it outside of the vault. How you doing? Hi. So, you know, the, it, it's that's the only thing that's... I wouldn't even say that it's ambiguous, but it would be cool to be able to see the card on request or something like that. We watch your, we watch your YouTube from over there. What do you mean? I mean, Gina, you had 80-some people on there. We were tripping out. You guys hunting me or something? We were watching you. Oh, yeah? Laughing. Why are you laughing? We love you. I'm not funny. We love you. Oh. All right. <laughs> what are my thoughts on the star stock Bs and Cs? Well, that's it's an interesting thing, Ziggy, right? Because we don't have anything to really compare it to. And if you look at the star stock pictures, they're not a clean scan. It's just like a stock scan. And you can't even see the edges of the card. So if you look at this, you can barely see it. Like, let me go to my, my eBay listings here, not to, you know, take a look at my own stuff. But if we go to my eBay listings and we take a look at my first listing is a Mike Trout Artistic Impressions and it's a PSA 10. But look at the scan. So you can see that this is a clear, clean, crisp scan of the card. You can see the corners. You can see everything about this individual card. The entire card is represented in the scan. 
So then if you go back to star stock, you get those stupid, you know, corners where you can't see the corners of this card in entirety. And I don't like that. You can see the back of the card. You can see that there's an edge over here at the right, but you can't see the corners. So that is really what I would rather do. So while it's cool that Starstock is having their A, B, and C grades, and that might come to get trust in the future. So people say, I can trust the Starstock A. I bought 10 of them, and they all came back 9 or 10. You know, it's not like horror stories where I bought a Starstock A, and it was graded a PSA 7, because they don't guarantee anything. So to see what the B grades were like, if you took 100 B grade Starstock, and then you all submitted them to PSA, and they all came back a 7. That would give us at least a clear idea of what that's actually going to look like. Because that's all people care about, right? They say A, B, and C because they want to know what it's going to generally grade out to. Right, you, don't, you wouldn't buy Bs or Cs to grade. And in some situations, the price is really, really off from the A. So it's interesting. And I've even seen some of the A prices be higher than a PSA 9. And if you if this is the scan that I'm getting of the card like this, I'm probably going to take the PSA 9 every time because that's a guaranteed mint 100% of the time versus potentially getting a 10 maybe 20% of the time if I'm lucky uh, versus not knowing what the rest of the corner is. And then that's left up to the star stock pre-graders. So as we get more trust and we see more from Starstock and people send the cards in and we start to get, you know, two years, three years from now, people get their returns and they're like, well, these were all Starstock A, these were all Starstock B, these were the grades. That will be there in the future if Starstock gains popularity. Did you dump your Kevin Knox cards? Good old Kevin Knox. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I think that it's fine. I think there's a lot of ways to play the game on Starstock for sure. Uh, who physically has them? I'm sure they're somewhere in an office. I mean, if they have 300,000 cards in the vault, it's really not that many cards. That's literally like one wall rack of boxes. So, I mean, I'm sure they have them organized. But, yeah, 300,000 cards is not all that many. It sounds like a lot, but it, but it really isn't. So, yeah, uh, just to... To reiterate, if you guys want to check out Starstock, they do have a bonus thing where if you use my username and you'd make your first deposit, they will give you $10 and they will give me $10. Just to put that out there. I'm sure most of you guys have probably seen or are already using it, but that's where this $20 here came from, uh, from people using my deposit thing. And hey, I mean, that's it's a pretty cool deal, honestly. So, I mean, I, I think Starstock's cool, but I, I like to vet everything and I like to overanalyze everything and, and sort of break it down to its core mechanics. Kevin Durant keeps them in his mansion. That's right. That's right. We're going to have Kevin Durant mansion cards coming up. They're going to look a lot better than the uh, the tribute, <laughs> the Kevin Durant tribute. Man, honey, some of these cards are crazy. We got a Zion Williamson that's worth like 45 bucks. We got a arriving now Tyler Harrow that's worth like 30 So it's it, it's kind of crazy. This Cam Reddish, green cracked ice rookie, is worth 80 yeah, it's weird. So I don't know if I should flip them or if I should just grade them or, or what. I mean, the Zion's off center, so I'll probably just flip that for sure. But the Cam Reddish, I mean, I don't know. That one's just a nice one. <laughs> I think that one's probably off center too, though, honestly. We'll see. But yeah, uh, so if you guys want to come on here and check out Starstock, my advice to you to find good deals would be to go to the marketplace Click view more and then go to sort by and look for the latest listings to see what people are listing things for. That's where you are most likely to find a good deal or a mistake from another user. Because these are fresh brand new listings. So maybe you're into Matisse Tybal and you think $8.99 is a great price for the reactive blue mosaic. Or $60 bucks for the uh, Donovan Mitchell shock optic. Jackson Jr., his name might start popping up again. DeAndre Ayton, I think that's actually a decent price uh, right there. Star Stock A, $9. I think I was I was selling mine for like 12 or 13 on eBay that I had picked up for like 3 bucks. Pronounced Hero. It's actually Harrow. I, I don't know if you... Uh, 
I don't know if you get it. It doesn't seem like you do trading cards in more. But H-E-R-R-O. Right? Hero. Maybe he even pronounces it hero. But I'm not going to give in to that. Hero is H-E-R-O. When you add another R, hero. That's just my strategy. <laughs> oh man, have you guys seen NBA Top Shot though? Let, let's let's talk about Top Shot now. This stuff is absolutely awesome, and it's really weird because when I put that video out, I actually had a guy come in and start talking all kinds of trash in the uh, in the comments. He was like, "This is bullshit, and this is nonsense, and and you're a jackass, and and I'm never gonna come here again, and I'm never gonna you've lost me as a viewer." And I'm like, for what? Because I'm into NBA Top Shot? I'm like, calm down, dude. Get some toilet paper and take a nap. <laughs> Vladi Divac? I do get it. I say the same thing, but it is what it is. Right, tomato, tomato. Exactly. Well, then don't give me your bull snorts. I saw the bull snorts when you said Harrow Hero or whatever. I, I, I get it. I get it. Wax sells for way more on Starstock. Yeah, I, I think honestly a lot of the Starstock stuff is a bit overpriced. So, like I said, I like Starstock. I think that the overall mechanics are awesome. I think you guys should definitely give it a try, get involved, and just hunt it out. Find the way to exploit the mechanics. Look for the nooks, look for the crannies, look for the catalysts that are going to cause investor types to want to buy those cards. If it's going to be one game of bowl bowl at an evening showing or whatever then get in there and, and try to use that. It's not something that you're going to make your main grind. You know, you're not going to spend eight hours just doing star stock. There's probably not enough juice there until more casual players use the platform. So it's something that you, you want to get into, but you don't want to just get entirely into. Now, as far as NBA Top Shot goes, that stuff right there is awesome. Uh, I mean, th this... So you, you go to the... Let's see. Let's go to the collection, first of all see what I got in my collection over here. You can see the showcases that I've created where they let you put all the moments in and you can take a look at those. And then you've got the moments that you have for sale. Then you have the packs. I click my pack tab. And the packs are a lot like Hearthstone, guys. They, they really are. <clears throat> I'm glad we cleaned that. Yeah, the, exactly. Definitely something to lose sleep over for sure. So you can, you can go to your pack tab and you can see what all kinds of nonsense is in here. I like saving these just because I think sealed product of any sort is awesome. And as the cards or the moments inside of them go up in value, the packs will also go up in value. They have challenges. So if you complete these challenges that you can get a cool reward. Uh, this is the one for the finals that I completed. So I got all of these different moments. And I ended up with a Jimmy Butler moment with only 357 of them were ever made. And you had to essentially get all of these guys right here. Uh, it ended up being like a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff, but it was cool. Here's the LeBron. Oh, is this from you? Oh, yeah. We saw you opening the box. That's right. So you, that's what you got out of there? What? Those cards came out of the box? Yeah. And the, some of them are good? Yes. Okay. We probably... <laughs> We probably have like maybe 250 bucks worth of cards for the 140 box or something like that at the end of the day. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty sweet. They give you a bunch of different angles, and then if you maximize it, you get this funky music. Let me see if I can. It might just be hammering you guys right now. Okay. I just want to make sure that you guys were getting hammered with because it goes like boom, that's boom, ba. Yeah. It's all funky. But I like it because they show you different angles, you know, different, uh, different scenes from the same moment. And I believe they're working on getting audio for some of them as well. Don't hold me to that, though. Bam. And they have a, a, you know, they have a nice marketplace. Like, you can go and check out all the different listings. And the first one, the guy's trying to get 50 k for. I mean, good luck with that, buddy. But this moment right now probably goes for 60 70 bucks. It goes for $84 is the cheapest one. You know, and you can test the market here, too. And you can see there's one for 85 
and then after 84 and 85 it goes to 87 so if someone were to come you know let's say that it went 84 85 87 and then 92 you know if somebody came in and bought all four of those suddenly it would immediately go up to whatever the next one was maybe 100 something like that Kobe White struggled tonight 30 minutes 1 out of 10 from the f oh damn yeah, yeah, it, it'll be a nice little window to buy some shit cheap for a day or two. WNBA players? Yeah, there's probably some value there, too. And that product is not that expensive, honestly, uh, comparatively. And then if you look at the marketplace... So these essentially work, in a sense, like the cards do, where the, the, more, the, the rarer it is, the fancier it looks. So if we get the rares then they have one little outline and they come from different sets. You know, there's run it back and MVP and then the base set. And it gives you all the information, Paul George, jump shot, tells you the date, metallic gold, limited edition, series one, rare, numbered to 299. And the lowest asking price on that is $26. And I got to tell you guys, you know, you might have some resistance to this, but most of the shots that I've bought, they've gone up 30 to 40% in value in just the last two months. And they haven't even started advertising. So as the advertising goes out, this is really going to see a big increase. I really do think this has a lot of potential. When the game comes out, it's going to get a bunch of attention, even if it's just for a small window and the game sucks. I mean, I just think that this stuff is really cool. You go to the legendary rarity. You know, this is like your, your gold or your silver prisms. And the cheapest one on the marketplace for any legendary is $99 is the cheapest. And that's what these look like. They look really cool in these cubes with whatever's going on. <laughs> Kobe White's a bust. Brooklyn is up 101.69 over Boston. Are you serious right now? Are you guys serious right now? Hold on. Let me, let me go check it. Let me go check that real quick. Man. Pure day trading, but people can make money? Absolutely. And there's definitely a link down below uh, in the channel information somewhere for NBA Top Shot so that I get a referral for you guys signing up or whatever. They're not giving me, like, money per whatever, but, uh, but I will get you connected to my account for a referral or whatever, which might be cool in the future. So then we have... What do we got? The... The Nuggets are killing the Blazers again. Man, is Lillard even playing, or do the Blazers just not care in preseason? What I care about is Bol Bol. Where is Bol Bol? Nurkic, two points. McCollum. Yeah, McCollum is the worst. Oh, Lillard's not even playing. He took the night off. Millsap with 24 points. There's Bol Bol. <laughs> He's in there for eight minutes. Four rebounds, one assist, and five points. That's not bad for, for eight minutes, honestly. You know, just, just a little bit here and there. I think I have a 2012 Prism Silver Paul Millsap in my eBay store. You wish you had a Mark Zuckerberg rookie card? I don't know, dude. That guy just looks like a weirdo. You know what I mean? When you, when you take a look at Mark Zuckerberg, he's the type of dude that you just walk the other way. More like Bust Bowl. I don't like your negative attitude trading cards and more. You're about to be trading cards and less. Don't talk about Bowl Bowl. <laughs> but what about, what about Zion? How did he do this evening? I know he was slamming and jamming, and Giannis wasn't playing. 23 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal. Yeah, that, that's pretty good, right? 23 minutes. Definitely solid. All right. Fair enough. So true about Zuckerberg. See what I mean? Yeah, that's what's up. Do you buy in on breaks? If so, where, why, good, bad? I ask because I have not participated in one. Let me tell you my story about breaking, my friend Brian. Back in the day, in around 2015, I got sick for a while, and I spent about $2,000 doing breaks. Now, these days, that'll get you about two and a half breaks. Back then, they were $50 to $100 a piece for stuff like National Treasures. Prism, you could buy a team for like 70 bucks, and a lot of teams went for $25 or $30.
So I did a lot of breaking in that time, and I was prim I was primarily trying to get Porzingis cards, but I did dabble here and there. And, and well, what did I, what else did I get? I don't know. I got a bunch of bulls too because Bobby Portis was smooth at the time. And, you know, I think that it depends on who you're breaking with. But for the most part, breaks are something that are just for fun. You shouldn't expect to profit on them. And you're not ever really, you know, you're, you're going to have a hard time making your money back. If you break constantly at the prices they're at, then you're probably still break even or down money. I would say you're, you're almost certainly going to end down money. It's like the lottery. Only way you can win is if you get lucky early and then you never play again. Because then you're going to keep yourself in this emotional spiral where you're like, oh, I got a break. Oh, I got a break. Oh, I got a break. And yeah, if you're grading every single card and you know, you're in every single facet of getting your money back, then sure, maybe there's some process, you know, some sets you can make your money back on. But for the most part, it's overinflated because the breaker has to pay for the product. They have to pay for the shipping. They have to pay for all the equipment. And the, I mean, they have to, there's so much they have to pay for that it's all going into what you're paying. So it's uh, breaking is something to be there for fun. Don't get caught up just because somebody has disposable income or somebody is wealthy or they have a job that allows them to spend 2K a month doing breaks and not care, whatever it is, you know, but don't get caught up in it because overall it's a negative EV game. It's not a game that you can win. It's like gambling in a slot machine. They pay out 99%. That means every time you click a button for a dollar, you are losing a penny. It doesn't matter what you get back in the short term. If you get back five bucks and you're feeling froggy, sure, you can cash out, leave, and say, you beat the game. But if you continually play, you will lose one penny per dollar forever. Just don't freak out on StarStock, guys, if your players have a bad game. Yeah, I think people get really crazy in spots like that. But but the, the reason why they do that, the reason why they get crazy and they try to push a guy off is because they're in that heat of the moment. They're driven by fear and emotion and they want to, you know, get the hottest guy before he goes crazy and they want to dump the hottest guy when he starts to suck. I mean, that's just reaction. You know, we, there's a, a reactionary market for these sports cards for the most part. Yeah, of course. Yeah, any other investment, Bitcoin, whatever it is, is better than breaking. I will say the best break that I ever did was like 55 bucks, National Treasures, 2015, baseball, and I had the Kansas City Royals. I got a Bo Jackson booklet. It was numbered 7 out of 10, and it was a quad relic autograph. I sold it for $90, which is what it was worth then, when I moved to Vegas a few years ago. If I could go back and just make one play, it would be to keep that damn booklet. That booklet was awesome. So if you guys ever find that seven out of 10, you better let me know. Man, that was a dope booklet. <laughs> a really clean Bo Jackson autograph too. Like you, it opened up and had like the little glass stained clear window and it was autographed in blue on that. But yeah, so just uh, just checking this stuff out, guys. You know, it looks a bit fancier. The numbers go down to, you know, 50 or whatever for these. And, and the money gets big for these guys. There's been a lot of transactions in the thousands of dollars range. All right, Steve. Thanks for hanging out, man. I'm going to get out of here in a few minutes myself. Have a good night, my friend. Uh, no, Turtle, I don't watch any other YouTube channel at all, whether it's card collecting, investing, buying, selling, sleeping, whatever it is, I don't watch any of them. I don't even know what YouTube... No, I'm just kidding. I do watch the occasional channel, yeah. You have a numbered Nolan Ryan book, which I'll sell someday? Nice, man. Hell yeah. How much is that Bo Jackson card now? Probably three to $500. You know? So in, in like three or four years, it's probably gone up like four or 500% in value given the, uh, the desirability of Bo Jackson these days and the, and the heated market we're in. But yeah, no, I, I watch a few other channels. You'll see me floating around here and there, Turtle. And man, I, I like these things because they just look cool. <laughs> I mean, these designs are awesome. But yeah, all right, guys. I'll, I'll give you guys five minutes to ask any other questions. And uh, I'm probably going to get out of here after that. We've accomplished our primary goal, which was opening this awesome mega box of the Hoops Premium. 
and we did get a pretty good box overall we can't complain you know you bust a, a zion a, all those guys out of there so it's, it's, it's pretty good got the arriving now cam reddish zion the matisse silver seku talon kobe white kevin durant Shaq, green ice garland even alonzo ball cracked ice i would say that was a pretty good box but not insane Hey, no problem. Any of you guys watch Girls with Guns? Asking for a friend. Never heard of it, man. Never heard of it. You have an in-person LeBron James 5x7 photo auto. Nice. <laughs> when you sell cards, do you always ship them in a penny sleeve and a top loader sleeve? My process is pretty simple. I'll take the card, I'll put it in a penny sleeve, I'll put it in a top loader, I put a little slice of painter's tape or freezer tape on the top of it. And then I put that into either a small cardboard mailer, which I can show you. So these things work really well for small batches of cards, guys, right here. This is a semi-rigid mailer, right? And it's, it's flat, it's not that hard to bend, it's better than an envelope. And I'm hoping that eBay allows these for their dollar shipping strategy or whatever because these are sturdy you drop the top loader right in there you know you can fit a few cards obviously fold it over and there you go or i'll get a, a form-fitting small uh bubble mailer that i can put either a graded card or just one of these other cards then you can put a small batch of cards in there too and that's it you know i've got a dymo label writer 4xl and you print the label out like that and they look just like this right here so when you have it loaded up boom there you go just stick it on there and you're good to go ming is correct i've spent 5100 buying into group break since april and i'm down at least 2k of that see what i mean even when you get a small win you feel emotionally elated but the real people that are winning in that market are the company that produces the card much cheaper than it sells it for and the company that sells the product. They are just the middleman. And when you open the product, you are the final user. And it is then up to you to go and get the rest of that value from the actual cards. In that case, you have to find another end user for each individual card, whether it's graded or not. So you have the hardest job and you also give up the most value. And that's why breaking is fun sometimes, but it's not something that you should try to do, and you shouldn't look at it as a profitable endeavor. It's very important in whether it's poker or sports cards, whatever you're into, you know, stock trading, you have to manage yourself mentally. If you can't manage yourself emotionally and mentally, you're just gonna go crazy. No, but you can get a like a reseller license or whatever, so you don't have to pay tax when you buy stuff. You have an 86 Fleer basketball set to sell raw. Any advice for me? Yeah, Mosaic, get in touch with me on Twitter, and perhaps I will buy it from you. But really, you just kind of have to figure out what your goal is. Mosaic, you know, do you want to grade it? Is it worth grading? If it isn't worth grading, where are you going to get the most return? eBay is going to have a bunch of fees. You could let somebody else do the work. You could break the setup and sell the, the you know star cards or maybe just grade a couple of them. There's a lot of different strategies that you can use. Yeah, a lot of different strategies. Have a good night, Turtle. It is really fun. You're right, Mr. Ellis. True. The max number of cards per thick stock envelope? Uh, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15, some, something like that. There's some decent balance to it. I got you, Mosaic. Well, if you want an opinion, you can certainly send me some pictures on Twitter. You know, whether I'm a player and buying them or not, I'll certainly let you know what I think based on my experience and knowledge uh, you can do or what you should do. Try to give you some help there. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about it, X-Men Avenger. And I think that it just happens naturally. It's not something that people mean to do. It's like when they put up their card on eBay, they want the absolute most that they can get for it. It's like, what is this card's average price? $20? I want 50 
and then when they're trying to buy a card, you might be the guy up there with it average priced or less, and they still message you and want half off. It's like, I roll, come on. <laughs> A good rule of thumb is to be fair with the people that you're dealing with both ways. If you're selling a card, leave a little bit of meat on the bone for the next guy. Yeah, I've picked up some too, Al. I've got about three or four of those floating around. I like those pulsars. I think they look good for sure. Nice pickup. I think we're going to see more from Bull Bull in the future. I think he's going to slowly get more minutes, and I would like to see what he's actually capable of. Because, man, I don't know. I think there's just what there's just something about Bull Bull, guys. He just there's something magical about that guy. I can't really tell you what it is, but when I see the glimpses of him playing decent minutes, most of the time I'm like, man, I want to see more. You know, maybe it's the connection with vintage basketball and his father, Manute Bull, uh, but but maybe Stop not. Doing that with the cards. <laughs> Why? It's it's because of playing poker, you guys. It's from playing poker or magic, actually. Stop doing that. Luke, Luke, I can't help it, man. Hey, look, they're in penny sleeves, dude. This is, it's from playing but magic. It's, I've been watching too. You've been shuffling the same. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, it's just. Like, the, it's like the Windows thing on the screensaver that's like hitting the corners and you're like, oh, here I'm it just, goes. I'm just OCD. <laughs> I, I've been a drummer for a long time too. And ask her, I'm just constantly playing Drumming, drums. Yeah. yeah. Hi, you guys. It's got to be super annoying. I want to steal them away, so... Yeah, yeah, all right, we're going. Where are we going? Anywhere? Yeah, well, I didn't defrost anything, so we've got to get dinner. Okay. What do you think of this card? Cracked ice, cam reddish. Nice. 80 bucks, they say, on eBay. It's good. W what do you think of this one? Arriving now. It's ugly. That's what I thought. It's ugly. What do you give? What do you guys give this design out of 10? Arriving now with the airplane. Be honest, guys. Not just because it's Tyler Hero. Harrow. H-E-R-R-O. Harrow. Hey, I had a funny. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of ten. I don't know. I think I think probably a four is fair. Like, it's below average, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. Right? <laughs> I saw way below comps, and I still get the, could you do 50 cents on that? Dude, I, I shit you not, man. The other day, I had a card up for $22, and I had a guy there message me and say, hey, man, could you do 20 on that? I'm like, look, it's already free shipping. You're already getting all the supplies and all the work and everything done. And it's $22. Can you throw me a bone? Can you throw me a bone? I'm paying all the fees. You're getting all the flavor. <laughs> Do you really need the $2, man? I'll send you some milk. <laughs> all right, guys. We've had a, a, a great night, I would say, opening this box and hanging out with you guys. Uh, I'm going to start a show. Let me run this by you here real fast. I'm going to start a show on here doing interviews and talking with people with more of a, you know, more structure, not just me babbling. And we're going to call it Knights of the Card Table. What do you guys think of that? Not like spelled K-N-I-G-T, you know, whatever else, but Knights, like evening. Yeah. Knights of the Card Table. <laughs> yeah, I feel like such a bonehead. But I like it. I like it. I would say the best strategy in those cases is just to ignore the person if the deal offends you. Like if you have a $75 card and they offer you $60, that's not unfair. That's a reasonable offer, I wouldn't be offended. But if they say $75 card and they try to offer me 25 bucks, I just, I'll ignore it. PSA collector saw it and was interested in it. I also have a promo card, Kobe Rookie, that I am boxed them up together for his Hall of Fame induction. There you go. Shia LaBeouf says do it. I wouldn't listen to that guy. I never even responded. I actually blocked the guy. I do that sometimes too. I had a guy threaten me the other day on eBay, my friends. He threatened me. I sent him a Montrez Harrell card. card I sent a Montrez Harrell rookie card, and these cards were listed as near mint condition, which means they probably have some sort of a surface issue or whatever, because keep in mind, a uh, 7, PSA 7, is near mint condition and the guy literally messages me on ebay and we'll go right after this honey sorry and he says something to the what was he what did he say exactly what you got over there <laughs> did you see my first comment uh, i probably didn't no sorry don't tell the story but i think i didn't see it 
But anyway, the, the guy basically threatened me. The guy threatened me over the Montrez Herald. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, constipated. There's like 75 people in there, so it's hard to keep up. Yeah, I, I, I know, there's a bunch. I probably did not see that first message. Nope. I'm stealing him, you yeah, guys. Yeah, sorry. I gotta go, homie. Homies. I let you guys have him for like an hour and a half. You guys, we, we had a long time together. Was selling wax. This guy messaged me to tell me how much I was making. Well, tell him thanks for doing the money. I'll let you know at tax time, homie. Is he an accountant or what? Gotta tell us now. No, uh, he, he basically just threatened me, guys. He, he said something like the, he wishes that he could, what, maybe we'll meet one day in person. He said, thanks for the effed up card. Maybe we'll meet in person someday or something like that. Just, just some backwoods yeah, shit. He said, I, I handle things better in person. Right. I, I messaged him back and I was like, are you really threatening me over a Montrez Herald card that's under 20 bucks? You know? And, and his response was, no, I just express myself better in person. Some real cryptic shit. But at the same time, at the same time, people are crazy these days, you know? And people are getting killed for less than a scratched up Montrez Herald prism. See this, guys? It's an Andes Mint, which means I'm out of here. You should look at it. All right, constipated. I'll try to find it, man. I'll see what I can do. If it, if it involves selling me something, I'm interested. But if it involves you selling somebody else something, I'm going to have to let it go. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye, you guys. Merry Christmas if we don't see you again. Happy holidays, all that stuff. I'll have a video out in the next day or two with some really sweet picks and a couple of really awesome cards. Have a good night, everybody. We'll catch you on the flip side.